Today, I'm up in the mountains. I'm here to see Rickard Enkvist, and he did win first prize for his beautiful wine. We're going to walk around the vineyards and see the whole process. So let's join Rickard at the Finca and see how his dream came true. With Gibraltar in the far distance, I'm again heading inland. In this area, between Cadiz and Malaga region, is the National Park of Los Alconochales. This is one of the biggest cork oak forests in the world. The cork oak trees are stripped usually every nine years. The cork industry is still an important part of this region and much of the cork ends up in wine bottles. Just on the outskirts of the park is the village of Galthin, high up in the mountains. The village is a typical whitewashed pueblo Today, I'm up in the mountains, as promised, on this secret location, to see Rickard Enkvist. It was the last night of, uh, of the Moors, before they were chased out, uh, down to Algeciras and to Morocco, to Africa. And uh, the mountain up here is called Sierra de la Bota, and uh, that is named after the fact that uh, the Moors were so quickly run away from here, that some of them had no time to put their boots on. So there were boots all over when the Spaniards came, and that's with the name Sierra de la Bota. Wow. Here, Ricard has fulfilled his dreams and made a beautiful finca on this hilltop. And there is even a little chapel on the property. It's early October and as the magic light of the autumn sun colours the wine fields, there is one of the most hectic periods for the winemaker Enkvist. At this finca they grow three different grape varieties. Syrah, Cabernet Sauvignon and Tempranillo. Normally, it would be impossible to grow grapes like this, this far south, because the climate here is one of the hottest in Europe. And many people have warned him not to try and grow and make wine here. No wonder they call him the loco sueco, <laughs> the crazy Swedish guy. I'm out in the Tempranillo fields with Ricard's wine expert to check if the grapes are ready to be picked. These are the Tempranillo grapes? Yes. 
Let's find something to have a look at. And Jose Manuel is really an expert. If you catch the grape, you can see the pencil is total red. Yes. This is one thing you say is the maduration is perfect for the color. If you open, one thing is you see all the interior is one block. You can see the seed is brown. The seed okay. is brown, yes. It's totally brown, it's wool. Yes. Okay. And when you press the skin, you can see the, the color, color is easy to extract. It's important for obtaining a red wine. And the, the meaning of Tempranillo is? This because it's normally is the more early you cut. The first grapes red to cut in this area. In this area, cuts more uh, later than another area yes. because you have two rivers in two sides of the of this mountain. You have eight. This is a microclimate, very very special. If you see in this time, cut for example the grape in Ribera del Duero, yes. in Rioja, in the north of Spain. Yes. Okay. For example, if you see Tempranillo in Sherry, it's possible cut one month or more before. Earlier. Exactly. Yes. In, in winter, it's no. Yes, very cold in the very winter. Very cold. Yeah. And you have very one thing very important. You have the light of the sur of Spain. Yes. Okay, it's important for the maturity. But you have a difference of uh, temperature day and night. Night. More a more, contrast. Exactly. In the uh, in the day is possible your time no more of uh, 35, 30. Mm -hmm. But in the night you have around 20, mm -hmm. 15 in the night. Yes. This is good for put all the color in the grapes, in the skin of the grapes. This year they have less quantity but better quality of grapes. The most important thing with the grapes is their sugar content, which can be turned into the right alcohol grade. You can see 12.8. It's approximately 13% in alcohol when the wine is finished. Yes. Ah, right. But this is not, uh, but this this no, is not ready this, yet. This is not, not ready, ready yet. Because no. they have problem with the seedless, it's now green. Okay, so it needs to be a little bit higher. The yes. sugar content. Yes. And this will be ready then to be picked in about a week, ten if days. It's possible then one week. Ten you can days. never say that, you know. The problem is if cut <laughs> the nut, okay. nut, nut. That is like t telling a, a, a runner or a, or, a, or a car in a race. Tell him, when is he going to pass the line? Yeah, <laughs> okay, all right. He passed when the he, line when, when he passed the it. line. Okay, <laughs> when it's ready, it's ready. Just a short time after the harvest, the grapes are being processed. Firstly, the stalks are removed. Then the grapes are pressed. Now the most is being pumped into the steel tanks. We pumped it in. When it's fermented again, we, we put it into these tanks. Yes. To be able to store it for a while when we are doing the next, next variety of wine. And uh, when everything is ready and clear, we put it into barrels. Now, what sort of barrels are these? These barrels are French uh, Eruc barrels. And we use it for two harvests. Yes. And then they turned into uh, storage for uh, Reserva and Grand Reserva wines, which will stay for a long time right. in Eruc's. We have wine here that's been in for two, three years in Eruc's. And then it's better to use old Eruc's. And these wines are named after famous Swedish uh, uh, persons, w women. We have oh, Greta, yes. Oh. We have Greta, for example, this is a young uh, uh, wine with, uh, with, with um, Cabernet and Petit Verdot. Yes. Uh, after Greta Garbo, of course. Of course, yes. And then we have uh, another wine that is called Astrid, after Astrid Lindgren, of course. Yes. Which is a Chardonnay wine that is oaked uh, in, in five, six months. And uh, we are now coming out with another one, it's called Ingrid, after Ingrid Bergman. But there's another story, we are not f ready with that yet. Oh, all right. Actually, that must be quite expensive to keep changing those barrels. Yes. 
especially as we have a very little production. Yeah. Because yes. this is going to be moved on and on three times during the winter to get the sediments out. Because we don't filter. If you want to filter it, you don't have to do that, and it's cheaper, of course. Yes. But the filter wine is uh, not, not the high good. quality. And here we come into a storage room. Storage room. Yes, when you are taking them in here, the red wine, it should sleep here for some time. Most of them for one year, and some of them for two years. Uh, then, uh, when we take them in, we put them in these jails and lock them up so they can't be moved. And then we have them with the top up for a week yes. to control that everything is okay and with the cork, the cork, cork, is, is, the cork is, is perfect and so on. As a wine connoisseur, Ricard has collected wines from many famous bodegas and still does. Uh, this is Piscera from 1989. He has a rather impressive collection of famous wines. I went to a bodega and then I was always asking questions on how do you do that. And you mean you were being nosy? Yeah, I was a bit nosy. <laughs> they thought I was nosy and irritated. So one of them once said, why don't you make your own wine, Mr. Enquist? Ah. And that had root in my head. So many years afterwards, I said, yes, I will do that. It's time to taste the final products. So, Ricard, what are we going to start with, please? I think we start with the white wine. Oh, yes. We start with Eleanor. And Eleanor is a very special wine uh, that is a unique niche wine because it's made of a mixture of Moscatel and uh, Chardonnay. Okay. People think when they talk about Moscatel, they think in terms of sweet wine. Yes. But yes. this is 100% dry, fermented dry wine which is um, very fruity, like the Moscatel is. And in the end, you have the oak chardonnay, which makes it rather long, and it's good for fish, uh, oriental foods, and things like this. Oh, lovely. Many uh, Chinese and oriental restaurants love this wine. Because, for example, Chablis and things, they die when you have a, a, a spicy food, you know. Yes, yes. But this can take spicy food. And you listen to the sound. Oh, what a wonderful sound. <laughs> I can smell the bouquet already. Yeah. It's fantastic. You can see it a little bit greenish. Yes. That's because we've finished the fermentation a little bit in the barrel. Right. The second wine is going to be Astrid. And uh, that is um, Chardonnay, 100% Chardonnay. 100%. It is oaked uh, for one year in French uh, uh, barracks. Oh, yes. That was another sound. Oh, gosh. It is uh, a real, you know, pearling, uh, oaky Chardonnay, like uh, the, um, from the Napa Valley so, or in Australia. We are tasting all his wines. He has the whole range from dry to fruity whites to a young red Greta. And finally, I know I have to taste his most famous wine of all. The wine that has given Richard Enkvist his reputation as a brilliant winemaker is El Sueños, The Dreams. Yes. And even so, even now, I test this wine once a month to see what's happening with it. <laughs> When you look at the glass, you should first of all check the color of it. It should be a dark color. Yes. And it should be a little bit violet in the ends for as long as possible. If a wine is 10, 15 years old, you can allow getting brown, a little brown thing. That is oxidation, it's normal. Yes. But you shall never be able to see that in a wine that's only three, four, five years. Then it's not a good wine, you know. No. <laughs> After that, you can do like this, and you see that the wine is crying. Ah, uh, yes. This is called cortinas, and you should have nice cortinas, you know, in the glass. Yes, because it clings to the side of the glass. Yes, it comes, it cries, it cries. To the, yes, it cries yes. slowly. It yes. should cry very slowly. Yes. But that's because it contains glycerine. Right. So that's the glycerine that's coming down, which yes. means 
is high alcohol. Yes, yes. This is a hundred percent Tempranillo. Mm. It's a very beautiful one. Yes, very pleasurable. And you know you're going to have an enjoyable meal with a beautiful wine. It just sets the mark. I took this wine to a contest. It's called Vin Ochen, which is a yearly contest for wines for uh, new bodegas. This was wines from all over. Spain. Yes. It was from Riviera del Duero, Rioja, and, uh, and uh, wherever down here. And uh, I tested in the wine just for fun to see what's happening because <laughs> this is my first commercial wine in 2004. Yes. And uh, there was 15 um, uh, different sommeliers from different parts of, of, of Spain yes. that um, did the test blind. Ah. But I could never dream of getting the first prize. No. When I came here, I had the idea of making my own wine and I said to myself, Tempranillo is Spain. Yes. I make Tempranillo, that's the typical Spanish wine and it fits very well into this. Then, of course, when times go, and you have done it a couple of times, you want to try something else. <laughs> so now I have five different wines with, some, with, with different grapes, you know. <laughs> What drew you here to Spain? Why did you actually land up here? Probably it was the sun from the yes. beginning, coming from Sweden. Yes. I wanted to come and have some nice sun and so on. And I remember the time when I, when I, I just said I would go down. And in the beginning I had a house in Manilva and was only for a holiday house. Yes, yes. And it's quite, times was quite different here, you know. We, when I came down it had a, a hard of a time to run my company because you couldn't, couldn't even get a telephone down there. No, that's It took true. five years to get the telephone from the stately Telefonica company. I came up here and looked at uh, the situation. I'm very interested in history and up here I've been also visiting Casares and all the villages. Yeah. And this is the Roman area for a period of time. And uh, one thing is sure that the Romans didn't go anywhere where it wasn't water and able to grow wine. Yes. So, uh, and I heard also from history that they did grow wine here. And uh, so that should be possible. Then I, of course, looked at the terra, the, ter the winds, the, the, the g we're very good uh, western slope here with yes. chalk and uh, yeah, everything. Yes and uh, uh, the altitude. And I said, this should be possible to make Tempranillo here with the different uh, changes of, of uh, the seasons and, uh, and the terra and, and the wind coming from Portugal and the Atlantic in here. Yes, every, you get every, the Atlantic yeah, we got the Atlantic here in the winter. Yes. <laughs> and many times actually during my busy time, we were sitting in the middle of a summer in a beautiful place in France or whatever, in a hotel, air conditioned. And the sun was out beautiful, and I could just imagine what's happening outside in the vineyards or in the gardens or whatever. And we were sitting there in a boring meeting. Yes. And I said yes. to myself, what in hell are you doing here? Yeah. Y yes. Yeah. The people are sitting here, it's not even fun. No. And they don't say any intelligent thing either. No. I, could have, I could have just done that myself without sitting and listening to them and saying, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Because in the end, I do what I like anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> if I wanted to do wine, this would be easier to do it in Ribera del Duero mm -hmm. and also in Rioja. Yes. But you know, it's always, as I said, a combination of different things. It's about love, it is about uh, hobbies, it is about making money, it is about uh, having a nice time liking the place where you are. And this is a beautiful part of the file, you know. Yes. These beautiful is. views and, and, yes. and the quietness up here, you know, a yes. remote place. So I said, this is good. I don't want to go up to Ribera Lerio when it starts to rain. And, uh, I want to stay here in this beautiful place. But I try to combine it with the wine. And the uh, family want to have a good life up here. I think I didn't do, do it that bad. The wine came also. Yes, <laughs> I think you've done it very well in actual fact. But there must have been something that's guided you towards all of this. What was it? Yeah, there's always uh, some dark and bright sides from your childhood that uh, comes up and steer you more in your life than you think. Yes. <laughs> and I think that uh, 
This started when I was only three years old. Oh, really? Because my father, he had a big fruit uh, garden. Yes. So he made wine out of apples. He made um, strong um, dessert wines. Yes. Uh, and uh, he made it from apple, as I said. And uh, I was helping him in the cellar. And uh, he saw the barrels when the fermentation went up. He put it in 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 big glass uh, damoshangs, you know, oh, yes. with the locks, and I was listening to it because it was like music because it bubbled Bubbles. up, bubble, bubble, and if you have ten of them that bubble in different times, it gets music, you know, <laughs> blah 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 blah, like they, this. I can still hear them bubbling in the cellar. Lovely. Still now, when I go down, when they started the fermentation here, I go down. And I can in uh, 50 meters when before I come down to the bodega. I can smell the fermentation, yes. the yeast working. You yes. know. From time to time, I remember my father, who's been dead for many years. But yes. uh, when we were doing this in the in the cellar, and he told me what to do about things. And, uh, so the process of making the fermentation, I knew when I was three years three. old. <laughs> When I came here the first time, of course, uh, the people who said that they should start to grow wine here and make a bodega, they uh, called me the poco loco, sueco, and uh, they still do. Yes. And I yes. thought that it was a nice thing, uh, and uh, especially uh, now when I won the prize. So I used that in my advertising. Of course. So I say that this is the wine from the loco sueco. <laughs> Ricard also makes vinegar from his grapes and uses old wine barrels for the fermentation. This has been staying here now for six months. Okay. And we'll stay here and for another six months. We will take it out and, and, and uh, clean it and, uh, and taste it and see how it is. It can stay here for many, many years, you know. How is it? Yeah, it's good, but it should stay there for more and more time, you A know. Bit more time. Yeah. It starts to smell vinegar. Mm, it really does. You're, you're absolutely right. I also like the idea of, of the other things that you, you're trying to incorporate within the Finca, like uh, the rose of lavender, the bees, the rosemary, the balsamic vinegar, all of these things. I think they're, they're really interesting touches. Some of those things just is what you have to do in a small Finca like this. I mean, the bees is working together with the lavender. Yes. The, taking the bees out early because the, uh, the, the rosemary and the lavender is flowering early. Yes. It takes the bees out early. Yes. And when they are out, they can pollinate the wine early. Yes. Which make a long growing, maturing period for yes. the plants. Yes. So that is working together. Most of the, uh, of the fruits and most of the uh, orange and uh, citrus and uh, charons and uh, tomatoes and whatever we use here comes from here. That's very good. And uh, that thing, I think it's good, but I, I hate this global theory and you transport uh, fruits from uh, China all the way oh, over yes. the world, you know. Yes, it's, uh, it's madness. And also you can see now, and if you look in television, that here we have control over what we eat. Yes. But, uh, you know, sometimes it comes to shock stories that they have uh, put in wrong uh, abonas or, you yes. know, in the milk was bad and yes. uh, whatever, yes. because they have no control. But no, they don't. No. This, is, this is the bad part. So it is really important, I think, to try and live a clean and natural life. And yeah. if you have a thinker like this, you are able to do it, which is wonderful. So really, this has been a terrific adventure for you, which you've followed through, obviously, with great passion. Yes. Yes. I couldn't say, I couldn't say it better myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cheers. Yes, cheers. Great day, and thank, thank you. you again. That's all for today. Next time I'm going to visit a farm close to Rhonda where they breed alpacas. 
I've never met these animals before. Why not join me and we can learn all about alpacas together. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.